All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your very busy days to be with us today. Welcome to another rendition of our Spotlight webinar ser series. Today's Spotlight is going to be on two of our very creative programs designed for students who want to maximize their potential and get the absolute most out of their time in law school. So if you're one of those people, welcome. You're at the right spot and about to receive some information that I guarantee is going to excite you. Before we start, let me start by putting down some, gr some ground rules. Um, remember, uh, you are more than welcome to ask questions and participate. Uh, the more interactive you are, the more uh, tailored to your needs this uh, webinar is going to be. I encourage you highly to ask uh, questions and, uh, and participate uh, in the webinar, uh, so that way we can uh, we can help you uh, more uh, to your specific uh, inquiries. Now, without any further ado, let me introduce you to our presenter for today, our very own fearless leader in the admissions office, uh, Associate Dean of Admissions, Mr. Anthony Cardenas. I'm going to take a couple minutes, not a couple minutes, maybe a few seconds to change the a PowerPoint uh, slide uh, so he can start and uh, and start his presentation. Eunice, thank you uh, for such a glorious introduction. I, I appreciate that. I, I enjoy hearing that I'm fearless and <laughs> hopefully we're all fearless going into this presentation and um, moving forward and going on to law school. Uh, I want to welcome everybody that's on the line today. Uh, this is exciting for me. I, I really enjoy uh, doing events like this. Um, it breaks up the day a little bit, and I get to talk uh, to students, hopefully. If you have questions, please, please uh, send those uh, forward uh, through uh, through the webinar. Uh, we can stop. We can answer questions along the way. Um, you do not be afraid to interrupt me. Um, I want to have fun with this today. I, I want to talk to you about uh, why Florida Coastal is a special place. And I, I really think that these programs, the accelerated two-year program and the dual degree programs, uh, really do make us special. Uh, we're, we're, one, we're the only uh, accelerated two-year program in the state of Florida, and we're one of only uh, 16 law schools across the country that offer a program like this. Uh, so we're going to talk about the, the two-year program first, and then we're going to talk about uh, the dual degree programs, which work in conjunction with uh, Jacksonville University. Uh, they're, they're excited to be a partner with us on this program, and we've been working with them for years here in Jacksonville, Florida. So we're going to talk about that, uh, the MPP and the MBA program. So Without further ado, I will start the presentation, and we're going to talk a little bit about the admissions process. As some of you already know, and maybe some of you don't, you have to go through the Law School Admissions Council uh, to be admitted, and this is where you're going to go and set up an account uh, at LSAC, LSAC.org, and you'll go there, and this is also where you're going to register for the LSAT if you haven't already taken the law school admissions test. The registration fee is $165, and we do recommend that you apply uh, before taking um, or uh, taking the LSAT uh, before applying for admission, uh, unless you can actually take your application. Your application will be put on hold at that time, but that this will start the entire admissions process for you. You go to LSAT, you'll learn a lot about law school. There are actually practice tests out there for the LSAT if you haven't already taken that. It's just a great way to kind of get started here. So, uh, upcoming LSAT administrations would be, uh, the next one would be in June, uh, June 6th. Uh, registration goes all the way up through April 20th, so that registration deadline is coming up in 16 days, so be aware of that. Late registration would be April 27th, and you should begin your scores back no later than June 30th by email. So, uh, if you are thinking about uh, starting in the fall, this is uh, an LSAT that you can still take. We do accept the June LSAT. Uh, you'll get your results back in plenty of time. You can start the application process. Like I said before, we'll put your application on hold, and we can move everything forward that way. Uh, the next uh, LSAT after that will be in September. So we do not have those dates yet, but I'm sure we'll have those soon from – actually, it's September 24th. I'm sorry. That is the 24th, and um, that will be coming up soon. Application requirements, we do require an LSAT score. 
all of your undergraduate transcripts and graduate transcripts, letters of recommendation. We do require two LORs, and there's a $30 cash report fee. The application consists of a personal statement, uh, your resume, uh, any addendums that you might want to add, and uh, the nice thing about Florida Coastal is that we do not charge an application fee. So uh, that would complete uh, your application process and get everything going for you there. Uh, application deadlines. We have no application deadlines. It is rolling uh, admissions, and we do uh, ask that you submit your application as soon as possible to, to first ensure your seat in the upcoming class. Uh, make sure that you have all of your financial aid and your scholarship set up uh, to attend and accept the Students Day, uh, which we do give a thousand dollars scholarship uh, in addition to your uh, Governor's Merit Scholarship if you do attend that day, and to help you pr prepare to relocate if you're coming from outside of the Jacksonville area or outside of Florida, which many of our students do. Uh, this will give you time to get started. And blame me on a day like today; it's beautiful and it's sunny here in Florida. Um, and it's uh, we are definitely enjoying the, the good weather today, even while I'm inside doing this webinar. So um, just a few things that we need. That's just a little housekeeping things for your application. Uh, great question, uh, John. What day is Accepted Student Day? We actually have an Accepted Student Day coming up this Friday, uh, April 8th. But we also have one in July. Um, I believe it is July um, 31st, right around that time. Um, it'll be on a weekend, but uh, if you come to any one of those two days, um, you do qualify for the scholarship. It's a great way to get to learn uh, a little bit more, a little bit more in depth about who we are and what we're about, meeting professors, current students, taking a tour of campus, uh, sitting in on a class, uh, meeting with financial aid and learning financial uh, aid literacy. Many of you obviously have undergraduate degrees. You might have experience with financial aid. But we're going to take this a step further, and we're going to talk about financial aid literacy, how to save, how to take loans out, all of that kind of stuff, and how to spend while you're in law school. So, Brittany, already coming out with some good questions. Uh, what is an acceptable LSAT score for the two-year program, the two-year accelerated program? We are looking for um, a strong LSAT uh, score. A median LSAT for the program last year was actually a 145. Uh, for this program, but having a, having that as our median doesn't mean if you're a little bit lower than that doesn't mean that you won't necessarily get into the program because we do take a whole holistic read of your application materials. Many of our accelerated program, uh, many of the students in the accelerated program, I have an, have a higher LSAT score or a mid range LSAT score, but we they they have a lot of work experience and their resume is really what we're also going to look at in this process. So your LSAT score is important obviously, for law school. But we're also going to look at your undergraduate GPA, your trends in grades uh, from beginning to end, from your freshman year to, to when you graduated. Many of our students, like I said before, have solid work experience. We have students that have military backgrounds that are in the, in the accelerated program. We have students that have actually or still do own their own businesses, and they're looking for uh, legal background because they deal so much in contracts and negotiations and things like of that nature. So they're coming back, and they do not want to spend the three years to complete the degree, that's one of the obviously one of the bonuses of this is that you do graduate early. Uh, but work experience, strong letters of reference, uh, your personal statement is going to be important in this process, Brittany. But uh, the median LSAT is a 145, um, which is a little bit higher than what the median LSAT is for our fall class. Um, does the AMPLE program qualify uh, to the path? Uh, that's that's a good question. Um, yeah, actually, uh, students who are coming out of the Ample program, like I said before, we are gonna we're looking at that LSAT score. So um, you would have to move your LSAT score up in order to be eligible for that program. So once again, we would review your application. I don't want to say necessarily that it's a no, uh, but we'd want to take a look at your application, uh, Joanne, to see if it is a possibility uh, for you if you've gone through the Ample program or if there's been any movement on your LSAT. So some of the benefits that we just touched on, uh, the nice thing and what we don't really put out there a whole lot, but since you're here at this webinar, you're definitely going to learn uh, final semester for the uh, accelerated program is tuition free. So you have a zero balance uh, for that final semester going in. There's not a scholarship in there for that final semester because your balance is zero, but you have no tuition and no fees to pay, which is nice. That is very nice going in and kind of a carrot at the end. Uh, of the stick for you because we really this the, the rigor of this program is very very intense. Uh, you're you're looking at three years of law school, 
and you're now going to put that into two years. So you're starting in May. You're going to you're starting in May of 16. You'll end in May of 18. So uh, that's something to take into consideration, and you'll have that at the end. Coastal law enhanced bar prep at no cost. Uh, we want you to not only do well while you're here at Florida Coastal and graduate from law school, but we want you to pass the bar. Uh, that's that's the ultimate goal for you. It's the ultimate goal for us. We share that together. So you're going to have a bar coach that's going to help you uh, prepare for the bar. And like we said, there is there is no cost, additional cost uh, for the bar prep program. You'll save a full year of living expenses versus a traditional uh, three-year program. So you'll be out in the workforce earlier. Uh, the savings overall is about fifty thousand uh, dollars, just in tuition and fees, uh, loans, expenses, stuff like that. So you'll have that advantage of getting out of the program earlier, and having um, having to pay less and getting out to the workforce earlier. Smaller first year classes and more personal attention. The summer program you'll actually be taking classes in the summer with your cohorts of accelerated students. So this is a smaller group. Our fall class is historically larger, uh, actually historically much larger than this program. So you're going to have a lot of individual attention. You're going to have a lot of one-on-one time with your professors. Some of our best professors teach in this program. So uh, they're going to want to, you're going to want to get to know them better. Uh, It's a great introduction and a great way to start without uh, being in a larger class or a larger classroom. And uh, the one final, um, Final part of the program is that all of our students get a MacBook Air. So all of our students will come in, and this is part of our educational technology program. Uh, I actually, um, everybody on my staff uh, carries around a MacBook Air with them when they're on the road. Uh, If you ever get a chance to meet with any of our counselors, they'll have one with them. Uh, It's a lightweight, uh, it's it's more powerful than a notebook. Uh, it's a great way to start off your law, your legal education here at Florida Coastal. Everybody starts on the same page. So, you know, we're here we are, we're all coming in. We all have the same technology. We're all moving forward. And we have a very, very powerful device that's going to help accelerate your learning here. Uh, John, another great question, uh, bar prep program date. Actually, we have six hours of bar prep that's included in the curriculum here at Florida Coastal. So your bar prep will actually start in your final semester uh, of the program, either the two-year or the three-year program. So we're going to start with that right away. And then uh, once you graduate, then you'll be preparing for the bar after that. So the full bar prep will begin once graduation uh, is over, and you're going to go right back at it and start preparing for the bar, whether it be here in Florida. We have students currently preparing for the bar in Florida, Georgia, Texas, New York, California. Um, So, um, Joan, I hope that answers your question um yeah the bar prep program starts um, while you're here at florida coastal so it's we're always preparing you for the bar we're preparing you for your future legal career and um we want to make sure that that when you go into that exam that you're ready for that so Okay, so I will go on to areas of law here at Florida Coastal. Uh, even though you're in the accelerated program we do have certificate programs uh, in business law uh, environmental law, family law, international comparative law, law practice technology, research writing and drafting, and transportation and logistics. We have concentrations in criminal law, health law, probate, uh, state planning and elder law, real estate practice, trial advocacy, and alternative dispute resolution. Now, what m- many students do know or are learning about Florida Coastal is that we have a very, very strong moot court team which even though you're in the Accelerated Program, you can still be a member of that. We actually have two, uh, two students currently in the Accelerated Program that are active participants in the or on the uh, Moot Court team. Mock trial is uh, something that you can also uh, be a part of while you're here. Plus, we have numerous clubs and organizations, everything from the Military Law so- Society to the Christian um, a religious law society. We have a lot of different uh, clubs and organizations here that you can get involved in, uh, really with a lot of uh, great uh, networking opportunities for you. So, yes, you're in the accelerator program. Yes, your classes are moving uh, uh, pretty quickly here. There's a lot of rigor in that program, but we don't want to neglect the other things. Um, and yes, Brittany, uh, we are we're actually putting together a, a program that is going to work with bar prep uh, and preparing you to sit. Uh, for the bar in other states. And we actually have a third year at home program. I'm not sure if you've heard of that, um, where you will actually, you can act, if you're in a traditional program, 
uh, you could actually do your final year of law school at home. So, Brittany, I'm not exactly sure which state you're in. Um, if you want to send that to me, but um, you could do that at home. Um, yes, uh, New York. Yes, definitely. New York is one of those states. Uh, and um, let me see. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. We uh, and Pennsylvania, Joanne, uh, Pennsylvania, too, uh, one of our top states uh, right now, Florida, Georgia. New York, Texas, California, a lot of schools in the Northeast um, are it's extremely important uh, that we do bar prep for those states. So having a bar prep coach uh, with a background from those states is a priority here at Florida Coastal. And we're working on state specific programs right now that you'll be able to take part in while you're here. Um, we also, um, you know, in terms of your application, character and fitness is uh, uh, I want to go back to that just real quick. Make sure that the character and fitness uh, section is filled out and that, you're, that you disclose um, everything on that because the, the bar associations, whether it be New York, whether it be Florida, California, Texas, uh, if you are applying for the bar after you pass uh, the bar exam, they're going to ask us for a copy of that uh, application. So they're going to make sure that you are open, you are honest with the application, uh, the admissions offices at the law school, and making sure that um, everything was disclosed on your application properly. Um, yeah, if you, you know, in terms of, of the three year, you know, the accelerated program. Um, you know, if you are thinking about transferring, yeah, it's, it's up to the school you're transferring to and how they accept credits. Um, that's another good question. But, um, you know, hopefully, um, you know, you just want to come through the program here and complete it here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you were, they would take a look at your transfer, your grades. And that I can't speak on behalf of the other schools, but there, there wouldn't be any problem with uh, transferring if you wanted to. So start dates. Uh, the summer program is coming up here very, very shortly. So if you are considering that program, I do recommend getting your application in uh, soon, very, very soon. May 16th is the, uh, the start date for that program. August 24th of 2016 is the beginning of fall. And we do not have the spring start date yet. If you're already thinking that far ahead and good for you, if you are, um, that would be January. Uh, we start that program in January. So I'm just going to take a quick look here to see if I have missed any other questions. And yes, Brittany, New York is one of those states. Um, you're one of our top states that we recruit students from. We'll probably be up in New York a couple more times, uh, in, uh, probably before the summer or even uh, before the start of the fall. So we'd love to see you and visit, have you visit us there uh, and meet with us. So we're doing a lot right now in terms of travel out of the admissions office. So we have dining events that are going on right now, and we'd love to have you out at one of those. We, we will hopefully, join, be able to make a, a stop in Pennsylvania for you. I'll, I'll definitely put that on the, the travel calendar for you if I can do that. So, all right. So I want to keep this moving ahead. We're already at 1218. Uh, one of the other uh, programs that I want to talk about or the other two programs I want to talk to you about are dual degree programs. And you've probably read about, okay, so you're coming out, you're being an attorney. How do we get a job? What are the next steps? I passed the bar. What do we, where do we go from there? Um, another way to make you um, even more marketable would be to add – another graduate degree program. So that's why we have the JD MBA and we have the JD MPP that we work in conjunction with uh, Jacksonville University on. Now, the application is still the same. You do have to apply to both Florida Coastal and to Jacksonville University. So remember that. So you'll fill out your application here and then you'll have to go to JU's website for their uh, MBA program and you can fill out the application there and get things going either for the uh, MPP or for the uh, MBA program. The joint degree with the MPP, which is a Master of Public Policy, uh, if pursued separately, and this is true for both programs, the MBA and the MPP, it would take you five years to complete. Uh, but if you do it here, it's only going to take you the four years to complete in a traditional program. Um, it's the only JD MPP program. So 
okay. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid we might be running into some technical problems here. Uh, let me see. I, I'm getting some feedback from you guys. Uh, some of you can, can hear Tony. Some can't. I personally still can't hear. Or see, oh, looks like looks like he's back. Tony, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can everybody hear oh, me? Perfect. I can hear you. Okay, we're we're back. We're back. All right, everybody. I'm, I apologize for that. Um, seem to have had a small technical error, but like any like any pro, we're off and running again, like it never happened. So. We'll just Let's keep moving on here. And um, we were talking about the MPP program, so the only program in the state of Florida. If you're interested in doing something like that, a lot of students that are interested. Um, yeah, Joanne, I think that's great. Computers, you can't rely on them. <laughs> I'm with you 100%. 100%. Um, so if you're interested in going into public policy, working in a uh, government, um, working um, in city government, national government, regional government, state government, this is a great way to learn about that. The MPP program is almost like an MBA for public service. So you're going to learn about finance. You're going to learn about administration. You're going to learn about management and marketing in these areas. So I kind of get excited about this. I also have a, a master's in public affairs degree. So I, I like the MPP program. It's a great program to team up with and a JD. To, so you have that. That's an excellent way to accelerate a career in uh, in uh, public service. So uh, if you are interested in something like that, strongly, strongly recommend it. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, oh, actually, without going to Jacksonville, but the MBA program, the exact same thing. Having a business degree, if you're going to one day open up your own firm, if you're going to work in business, uh, not only can you do the business law certificate, but also having a JD MBA on the resume moves things forward for you in terms of networking and your career and moving things ahead for you. So I, I highly recommend both programs. We have them both here. If you'd like more information on these, you can call me directly or, or email me directly. We'll definitely would love to talk to you or your admissions counselor, Kim or Megan or Eunice or Nicole. They're all here to help you out uh, and talk to you about that. So um, hopefully they've been helpful through the process. For those of you that are not in uh, Jacksonville, let me tell you a little bit uh, about uh, Jacksonville, Florida. We have uh, over 20 miles of wide and uncrowded beaches. Somebody wrote that one for me. Um, sometimes they're crowded, sometimes they're not. Uh, we're close to St. Augustine, variety of nightlife for every lifestyle here, historic beach and modern neighborhoods. So, you know, you, you're not you're going to spend a lot of time here. You're, the one area you're going to really get to know in Jacksonville is going to be the library. Uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time there. That can uh, isn't as crowded sometimes, so definitely find a good spot in the library. It's not. I don't want to say like it's uncrowded beaches, but find that awesome spot in the library to start studying and make it yours. Um, also talking a little bit more, the cost of renting in uh, Jacksonville. We just did a study. We were actually just up in Toronto, Canada, and that's why that says that on there. But uh, the cost of renting in Toronto was about 12% higher. London, 61%. Sydney, Australia, 80%. But you're also going to notice that the cost of living um, just nationwide is a lot lower here in Jacksonville. So if you're in New York or if you're in California or if you're in Texas, living here in Florida is a lot cheaper. Uh, social life, we have the St. John's Town Center. Uh, if you like to do shopping, the beaches. We have the Jaguars. I wish I could say more about the Jaguars, guys. Sorry, they're not that. <laughs> they're improving uh, by by the season. So hopefully one day, um, hopefully I can get an LOL on that one, Brittany, because I need it because uh, being a Jags fan is sometimes tough. So, um, but you have that. We also have uh, PGA, a lot of uh, golf and stuff like that going on here, fine and performing arts, and, of course, the Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens. So um, there's a lot of stuff going on. And, of course, housing. You're going to want to find housing here like we had talked about. Um, so, um, yeah, remember, uh, if you're looking for, we have places out at the beach, we have places downtown, we have places that are five minutes from campus and finding the right place to live is just as important while you're here. So you can, you can have a good study environment, not only here on campus, but also when you go back. Um, and Joanne, thank you uh, for feeling for me. Not a Jag fan, but I feel you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, and we do. Yes, Matthew, great. For, I love that you pointed that out. We have a couple of Miami Hurricanes on the Jaguars. <laughs> there is potential for sure. I'm loving that we're going into that discussion too. You guys are awesome. I'm loving this. So um, 
I am looking on the bright side. Thank you, John. So that's my presentation uh, for you about the school. And I, I think I'm going to bring uh, Eunice back on to also help answer any questions, uh, anything else you guys might have uh, for us. But I, I hope that this has been informational. The last 25 minutes have been informational for you. Um, taking a look at these options, look, taking a look at the accelerated program and there are all of the benefits that are associated with that program, but also taking a look at, hey, what else can I add on to my JD degree? What else, what other programs, the MBA program, the MPP program, how does this make me even more marketable after I leave here, the people I meet, if I want to stay in Jacksonville or if I want to take this degree back to Pennsylvania, New York, California, wherever that is. So it's been an absolute ple pleasure uh, meeting and talking with you today. So if you guys, please, if you have any other questions, um, we'd be happy to answer those. And if Eunice has anything to add, I, I would love to hear from him too. All right, uh, Tony, thank you very much. Thanks for doing this. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Omri, Joanne, Brittany, Matthews, all you guys who ask questions, thanks for participating. We definitely encourage participation. Like I mentioned at the top, uh, the more you participate, the more tailored to your needs this is going to be. Thanks again, Tony. That, that was very informative. I learned a lot that I didn't know. So that's that's good. Maybe we should do these uh, uh, for, for us every now and then. Also, I thought maybe we should do a webinar on uh, on football alone and, and just talk about <laughs> the, uh, possibilities for, for Jaguars. Seems like there's a lot of interest in that front as well. Uh, not many questions have been uh, have been left unanswered, but I've, I have received some uh, uh, pre-submitted questions. So, so I ask you that, Tony. There's only a, a handful of those, or a couple of those, rather. Uh, I had a student asking, how long does it uh, usually take for the application process in terms of reviewing? Meaning, uh, uh, I guess, in other words, uh, how long before they hear the results after they submit the application? That that is a, a great question, and and actually, uh, Brittany just uh, asked a good question too. The application process, depending on the application, if it comes in, we have all of the pieces of the application in that we can actually do the read. We're going to get back to uh, the student as quickly as possible. It, some applications are are a little bit more uh, complicated. There's more to them. Uh, those will take longer. Usually we're, we're going to get back to a student within a couple weeks after receiving a, a completed application. We're going to get an answer back to you. Uh, the staff uh, re reads applications on a daily basis and then as they come in. And I also, uh, I, I read applications myself. Um, I believe that's important. If we have or need to request more information, we, we try to get back to the student as quickly as possible. The same day after during the read, uh, we'll send notes and um, we'll get that forward. Some applications go for CNF character and fitness review. We do have a faculty admissions committee uh, that also uh, reviews applications. So sometimes it does take a little bit longer if it does go to that committee. But when we do read an application, we're going to take a look at, like I said before, uh, the student's undergraduate transcripts, trends and grades. We're going to look at the letters of reference. Um, I always like to see letters of references from professors, uh, a lot of faculty members, uh, so, uh, supervisors. I like anecdotes over adjectives. Um, I want to hear, um, you know, Brittany uh, was really, really good at this, and this is where she went above and beyond, and Joanne was really, really good at this, and this is why she's great, and Matthew did this, and this is why I think he's going to be a phenomenal law school applicant. That's what I like to see in my LORs. Um, then we're going to take a look at your LSAT scores. We're going to take a look at um, – um, you know, the, um, the writing sample. Uh, writing, obviously, in law school is extremely important. So we want to see that letter of rec from an attorney is always, always good. Matthew, that's a great question. Yes, we like to see them from attorneys, people who have been in the business, that know the business, can speak to, to you and how they can see you as a future attorney. Always nice. Um, if you've interned at that law office, even better. But if you have uh, an attorney that can speak and knows you well and can write a letter of reference, we definitely definitely want to talk about that. Uh, we definitely want to see that. So we get back. So depending on the application, um, if you ever have any questions about uh, the application process or if it does seem like it's going longer, call the office. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about it, uh, talk to you about Florida Coastal, but talk to you about if we are missing anything in the application and doing that. Um, scholarships. Scholarships are based off of LSAT scores and undergraduate uh, GPA. We're going to take a look at that to determine your governor's merit scholarship. So it's all based on merit. So we'll review that. 
We do have a scholarship reconsideration program. If you received a higher scholarship from another law school, um, we, you can send those in and uh, we can see if we can increase uh, your scholarship um, if we need to. Um, if Florida Coastal is your number one choice, we'd love to make sure uh, we understand the difficulties that can't that, that come up when trying to finance a legal education. So anything that we can do to help you out there. Financial aid applica- uh, packages should be coming out very, very soon. Uh, the financial aid office has been working diligently. If you have your financial aid in, you put us down as a school to receive what we call your ICER, which is your institutional uh, student information report. If that comes in, uh, then we're going to get you packaged. So hopefully we'll get that done. If you don't get a package soon, call our office and we'll, we'll follow up with the financial aid office for you. So um, we, we'd love to work with you on that. Let me see what other questions did we have here. Um, I think we had a question Joanne asked about the diversity scholarship. Uh, we do have extra scholarships above and beyond. Um, if you're a legacy of Florida Coastal, we have a legacy scholarship, uh, first responders scholarship. We have a diversity champion scholarship. If you go to floridacoastal.edu or excuse me, FCSL. Dot edu, click on admissions, and you'll see a scholarship link. Click on that, and you'll see a list of all of the scholarships that we offer here. So any, any way that we can help you out with that, um, it gives all the directions on what you need to do to apply for additional scholarships. Some of the scholarships, like the Diversity Champion Scholarship, require a uh, statement, a diversity statement to go along with those, but all of the, all of the directions are listed out there for you. Eunice, were there any other questions? Well, uh, well uh, the other question, the other question I think, scholarship, scholarship I mean, was brought up. And, uh, and, uh, so I, I don't have any questions. Question. Uh, if there is any other question from our attendees, this is, uh, this is the last minute, last call for the questions. Uh, but uh, I, I will take this opportunity to thank all of you. Um, oh, Matthew is asking, Tony, uh, usually how many individuals review each application? Yes, uh, how many? It, uh, sometimes if it's uh, a committee review in the admissions office, it could be two to three admissions counselors would review an application. The faculty admissions committee actually has, um, I think we have seven members on that committee. So that t- depending if that application went there, it could be seen by up to five, probably members of that committee. So at a time, uh, generally uh, on average, uh, an application is read by one to two admissions counselors in the admissions office before a decision is made. We wanna make sure we're making a good decision, uh, not only uh, for Florida Coastal, but for the students. And we feel that, and for everybody on the line, um, you know, when you're applying, when you're applying to law school, it's got to be a good fit. Um, if you're going to, you know, if you're working with my admissions team and they're awesome, um, it's okay to let them know, you know, this, this isn't a, a good fit anymore. Um, I, I find, if I found a, a better fit, um, then we're going to be like, okay, you know, congratulations. That's excellent for you. We understand completely. But if you come here and you meet with the admissions team, you meet with me, you meet with the dean, you meet with the president of the law school, you meet with faculty members, and if you can walk away at the end of the day and say, you know what, that just felt right. It felt right. That That's that's going to be huge for you guys. So, uh, you know, when you're making that decision. So we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're bringing in the right student for Florida Coastal, that we're the right, and you've got to make that decision, obviously, if we're the right law school for you. Um, what is usually the median undergraduate GPA for Florida Coastal? Right now for our admitted pool, we're at a 3.25 as our median, which, um, like I said, you could be under that, you could be above that. We have a certain amount of people above and below that. So um, if your GPA is a little bit lower, like I said, we do a holistic read. doesn't necessarily mean that you're not admissible to Florida Coastal, and it's not a standard that we, we hold up any applicant against. We're, we're reviewing each individual application on its own merit. I hope that helps, Brittany. All right, thank you very much, Tony. Uh, looks like we're getting a shout out for Kimberly Jones. I, I agree, uh, he's, she is very awesome. Uh, <laughs> on, that, on, on that note, uh, once again, I wanna thank everyone who participated and, and attended. We've had a very, very good turnout this time around and we usually do. Uh, now would be a good, good time to remind you guys that we have uh, these webinars every two weeks. So uh, please do join us, as you see, they're very, uh, easy to join and we do our best to help you uh, 
uh, as, as much as possible. Well, uh, Tony, thank you for uh, your very informative presentation. Uh, I, I hope uh, everybody uh, found it as informative as I did. And uh, to all of you attendees, uh, this is uh, some of my information as well. Uh, feel free to stay in touch and uh, ask more questions as they come up. Um, before I uh, close down, Joanne is asking if uh, if these uh, webinars are going to be on a specific, uh, let me see, every two weeks on a specific day. Yes, they're usually on a Monday. Um, actually, they've always been on a Monday. Uh, so I would say always on a Monday at noon, uh, every two weeks. Uh, you will receive emails about them. So you'll have a little bit of a help, heads up on that. Uh, it, it's, it's good to see. It's good to see. There, there's some thank yous coming in. Thank you very much. And like I said, the information is on the, on the page. Uh, please feel free to stay in touch and we'll be more than happy to hear from you. Do not hesitate to send in your questions. And we look forward to see you in our next webinar spotlight series. Thanks again and have a great rest of the day. Thank you, everybody.